Hello, it's MC Health Life Coach here in the Crooked Kitchen. We're back because I got a request from my mother-in-law. She loves hummus. So that's what we're making today. Um, totally cool by canned hummus. I mean, canned hummus. <laughs> canned garbanzo beans. Um, but personally, I love my freaking Instapot. It's fantastic. So what I did was I soaked two cups of chickpeas the night before. Um, obviously they plump up, so put them in a larger container so you don't get an overflow. <laughs> and then basically what I did is I put them in the Instapot with some bay leaf and some salt, avocado oil, and a couple of uh, like cayenne peppers dried. And um, cooked for 30 to 40 minutes. I'll put the whole recipe down, but two cups, and then I think I did like eight cups of water just to be on the safe side. I think you could probably use less. Cooked them, and then strained them, laid them out on a sheet tray, cooled them. You can cool them in the refrigerator. You can cool them quickly in the uh, freezer if you need to be making hummus for some kind of family game night or anything like that. So, or you just are just hankering for some <laughs> delicious hummus. So that's what I have here. This is about a pound, six ounces. On the cans at the store, usually 15 ounces. So, you know, make a judgment call. You can also use uh, less of, you know, the ingredients that I'm putting in today if that helps you out. So what I'm doing is gonna add all those into the food processor. And then what I have here is a third of a cup of a ni it's nice tahini. So I'm going to put that in there. You can make hummus without tahini, but it's not as creamy and delicious as you want it to be. Um, of course, I'm putting garlic, so I'm doing three cloves. Um, today I am making katamala olive uh, hummus. I really like olive, olive hummus. Um, but, you know, again, you can make basil hummus, roasted red pepper hummus, roasted garlic hummus, black bean hummus, um, which is also my favorite for especially like hearty vegan um, or vegetarian wraps. So good. It's also really good when you spread that on the bottom with like some roasted chicken and some, you know, sauteed veggies. That's really good too because it almost um, acts kind of like you can thin it out a little bit and it acts kind of like a cream sauce. So that's cool. So we've got a fourth of a cup of pitted katamalas, you know, just to make sure we all are on the same page. And then I am going to put juice of one full lemon. You might need more, you might need less. Depends on A, how much lemon you prefer. Um, I do love some citrus. I am not gonna salt it right away, A, because of the olives that I'm putting in there, but also because I had pre-seasoned the chickpeas when I cooked them, which is also a plus because you can kind of infuse flavors into um, the chickpeas if you cook them yourself. So we've got juice of one whole lemon. Well, that's in there. And then I'm going to do a couple tablespoons of olive oil. Um, I always blend this first for several minutes before I add water if need be. I like a thicker hummus and then as I store it and then I can always thin it out as I go. So that's what we're gonna do. Blend it. We'll probably stop it and scrape the sides, but again, hummus is a great snack for kids and for you on the go. Um, just a reminder though, just to make sure, you know, like hummus is usually picked with, you know, tortilla chips or pita or some kind of bread, which is great if the bread is great, um, good and made with whole grains and everything like that but just remember that like you're eating carb on top of carb so just be aware of that and maybe mix it with you know eat it with scallions but bell peppers broccoli um, I love broccoli and hummus cauliflower uh, carrots you know anything like that just make sure that you're trying to get in more of those nutrient dense veggies as well because chickpeas are a good source of fiber and protein but again you know you don't want to put too much on top of each other so right now this is looking smooth and thick so i'm going to let it ride for a little bit longer 
And then I'll probably put a couple tablespoons of water in there. But let's, and then we'll adjust the seasoning as well. Woo! So I hope your day's going well. It's been sunny and, uh, you know, not too extremely hot, so that's kind of nice. Uh, yeah, still figuring everything out with the new move, but it's going pretty well. Uh, my sister, like, she had the smallest wedding ever uh, because of the whole COVID thing, but we had a nice little dinner in our backyard, so that was really wonderful and made it a little bit more special, I think. So that was kind of awesome. <laughs> All right, let's check this out. Get my tasting spoon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Tasting pretty good. Um, I am going to add a half a teaspoon of salt. and a couple tablespoons of water. If you like it more garlicky, put more garlic in there. You can put fresh herbs, parsley, um, basil. You can do toasted pine nuts, cashews, um, all sorts of things. Also, I might put some black pepper in it. I know, but a lot of black pepper in things, but I like black pepper. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put a pinch in there. Because, you know, it is what it is. And that's looking pretty delicious. I think what we're doing is about a quarter cup of water to get that perfect consistency for this particular batch. And again, all trick peas are going to be slightly different. They're going to puree slightly different. So again, have confidence in yourself, slightly adjust things. You can do it. You know, you got this because cooking is about experimenting and making delicious things. And also just be proud of yourself for like getting in the kitchen and like trying it out. Cause I mean, right now we do have time on our hands and it's like, why not teach yourself how to make delicious things? Cause why do you want to eat bad things? Ooh, la la. All right. I think that is looking delicious. Can you tell the difference? <laughs> It's smooth and thick and delicious. So, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, there you go, mother in law and everyone out there. So, you make a delicious hummus. And then put it in a bowl, drizzle a little bit more olive oil in there, add some red chili flakes, anything that you want. And yeah, make your own hummus. Especially if you eat a lot of it. It's more cost effective. <laughs> and just good, you know? So if you like the recipe, again, it's gonna be on my website. <clears throat> and follow or comment below, please. And uh, yeah, let me know what you wanna see cooked and I, I can do it for you. <laughs> well, I hope you have a great day and enjoy your hummus. Get out there. <laughs>